Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm finally showing you some more DIYs that I've been working on for my daughter's nursery. Um, if you've seen my last video of me doing this safari animal artwork, you can see that there might be something different going on with this wall. Um, so that's included in this video today along with two other DIYs. And this is gonna be a part one of the DIYs for her nursery. I have a couple more that I'm still currently working on. Again, I'm just doing this in my spare time when I'm, you know, when she's down for the night or when someone is here to watch her. So um, I'm so excited to share these with you. I hope you guys love it. And be sure to subscribe because as soon as these DIY videos are up, that means her nursery tour is coming up. So super excited to show you. Today we are going to be adding another layer to my daughter's statement wall to make it truly that a statement wall. Um, so before we moved, I had been playing with the idea of wallpapering one of her walls to make a really cute accent wall or statement wall. And I really liked all of these kind of tropical or like safari like naturesque um, prints that I was seeing all over Instagram and Pinterest and that was my original plan but after I have done this animal wall with uh, my hand-drawn safari animals and this faux greenery uh, as you see in my last video I decided that something a little bit more simple would be best I didn't want to do this on one wall and then a whole another wallpapered wall with more greenery. I thought that might have been a little bit too much. So I decided to do poke knots instead. If you guys don't already know, wallpaper is pretty expensive. And I mean, this is a decent sized wall and we do have high ceilings. So I would need at least five panels. Of wallpaper and each panel can be upwards of like $30 and I figured you know what I don't want to spend that money so I'm just going to do it myself as usual so this is what I'm gonna do I ordered blackboard stickers I was about to say bread blackboard stickers from Amazon this is 17 by 78 inches give or take just a regular blackboard sticker. This was only $6.99. I bought an extra roll just in case, but I'm pretty sure that one roll is gonna do just fine. So I cut them into strips because I thought it would be easier to work with just individual strips versus working with this whole roll. And that way you can also just make sure you're not cutting them too big. But you just, I've been just freehanding the circles. If you wanted to, you can easily just buy um, little polka dot stickers, like regular circles, all uniform circles. But I really liked the idea of having them be very like unique spots throughout and not all the same size or shape. So that's why I'm doing it freehand, even though it is more tedious. But I think I'm gonna really like the way that it turns out in the end. I already tested them out to see if they would stick um, on a much smaller scale than an actual chalkboard. And these have been here overnight and they've stuck so far. I think I'm going to be doing a lot of these littler dots versus these bigger spots, but I'm pretty much just going to do that to this whole wall. And I'm really excited to see how it turns out, so let's do it. These are really simple to use, so there's already a backing on it, and all you have to do is just peel off the backing, and it is already ready to just stick on. And then you want to take your finger and just really rub it into the wall, especially since our wall isn't the smoothest, um, and it does recommend, you, recommend that you do this on smooth surfaces, so I'm just really making sure to kind of hold that on there for a couple seconds. And this is a great alternative to painting. I know that it would probably be, probably be less time consuming to paint 
However, we are just renting, so I didn't want to have to deal with having to paint over it if we were to move out, or even if we just wanted to change the design of Layla's room, or if I end up polka dotting this whole wall and not liking how it turned out. So this is the finished wall with all of its spotted glory. I am loving how different they all are, how it's not uniform, they're all different sizes, and it's spaced out completely random. I really, really wanted to be able to achieve that kind of wild look and not have such a uniform spotted wall, but I love the way that it turned out. Thank goodness, thank goodness, because it was actually, it was so tedious cutting out all those spots and sticking them on. I'm actually recording this several weeks after finishing that wall and they've stuck. They've stuck. So they are easy to take off, but if that's only if you're trying to take it off. So I wouldn't be cautious if you have... If you're doing this for a kid's room that you know likes to pick at everything my daughter so far hasn't really paid any mind to the spots on the wall so it hasn't been much of an issue but if your kid is you know at that age i would probably stick something underneath right in front of the wall so that they can't get to the wall and start picking at it it could become a choking hazard or it can be just the perfect solution for an older child's room you know where they know better not to mess with the walls and they're not interested in picking off spots off of their beautiful wall but overall i'm in love with the way that it turned out i've had so much good feedback so far and again you guys this whole entire statement wall was done for under or around 40 bucks which i'm pretty pleased with okay so now we're gonna make some pillowcases for some floor pillows that I wanted to have in Layla's room. I'm just taking an old pillow that we have from our living room that doesn't really go with the look and the vibe that I'm going for now that we've moved. And I'm also taking apart one of our old bedroom pillows. So I have the old stuffing here and I am going to um, use the old pillowcase so it's kind of like this dingy old pillowcase. I already cut it. This was a regular, you know, sized pillow. And then I cut a few inches off of it. So it's more of a square versus this long rectangle. And I'm pretty much just going to stick the stuffing back in here, sew this shut, and then throw on a new pillow, pillow cover over it. So I went to Hobby Lobby the other day and found the most perfect fabrics. I picked up this Dalmatian one, which I think is so perfect because I spotted her wall. So this is going to play off of that perfectly and bring the spots to another area of the room. So they kind of justify each other. And I know it's Dalmatian, but I'm thinking of it as more of like just a black and white cheetah print. And then I also, oh, by the way, this was on sale. It was like 30% off. So it was like four bucks. And I got a yard, just a single yard, because I'm only doing one pillow in that fabric. And then I found this gorgeous fabric, which gives me like a very knit, comfy, cozy vibe. And it brings in the pinks and whites. This is on clearance for $3 a yard. And I got a yard of this. So pillows can be crazy expensive. This is actually going to be my first time making my own pillowcases, but... For seven bucks super excited so i hope they turn out well i mean it should be pretty simple to make your own pillowcases right i've already cut out the polka dot fabric so i'm just gonna sew 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 and then sew a little bit on both ends here shove the pillow in the opening and then do a little hand stitch to close it off and then same with this however for this one this print is gonna cover this and you can see like the oranges and pinks and yellows coming through when I lay the fabric on top of it so what I'm gonna do instead of being able to see the color underneath I'm taking the old pillowcase that was on the bedroom pillow and then I'm gonna use that to layer it so it'll have a white layer underneath 
and you won't be able to see all those other colors coming through. So this was our old bedroom pillow. As you can see, it's not a rectangle. I have this raw inch because I literally just took scissors, chopped it off, and then I folded the stuffing back into itself and kind of just, you know, stuck my hand in there and massaged it around so it doesn't look so chunky, but it's significantly fluffier than what it used to be. This was like the flattest pillow in the world. I pinned the edges and now I'm just going to sew this shut and then make a pillowcase. I sewed my three sides and then I sewed a little bit here and a little bit here so I left an opening so I can shove the pillow in Then I'm going to finish it off with a hand stitch. But you guys, what I forgot to do because I've been so out of the sewing game, I did not make sure that the fabric was facing the right way when I sewed them together. So now when I flip it inside out, one side is going to be the back side of the fabric. But that's okay. It's still kind of cute, right? Like you can't really tell unless you're really paying attention to it. Oh well. So now I'm just going to cut off the excess so I don't have so much fabric from after where I stitched or after where I sewed shut the pillow in, finish it off, then I'm going to finish the same thing with the black and white fabric, and then we'll be done. And we've got pillows! So I am by no means a professional seamstress at all. Like I did a pretty amateur job on the hand stitching to close off the pillows, but you can't really tell unless you're trying to find it or unless you've watched this video and know that I messed up. But anyways, I'm so excited to put these into our room. They're going to look so, so cute and fit in perfectly. Um, and for seven bucks to give new life to pillows that I was probably going to replace anyways, I'll take that any day over spending like 30 bucks on a single pillow. For this DIY, you're going to need just an old t-shirt. This is from the terrain race that we did in San Jose. I do it with my cousins. Um, we've done it two years in a row now and we're making a tradition out of it. So I'm pretty sure we're going to be doing it next year as well. Um, and then I have this faux greenery. This was actually from our baby shower. And I went over to my mom's today and just saw it in the kitchen that looked like it didn't really have a place to go. So I offered to take it off of hands for her. And then I have my paints, a red one and a white one. These are washable paints, which is probably not going to be your first choice if you want to do this. But this is just what I have on hand. So red and white because I'm going to be making a pink. I have my plates to mix the colors. And then a couple of brushes, even though I'm pretty sure you're just going to need one. Then I also have my scissors and a hot glue gun. So I'm pretty sure if you guys have been watching a lot of DIY videos, you've seen a lot of people, you know, take some twine or rope or something and then just wrap it around the bottom, which is originally what I was going to do. But on my target run, I wasn't able to find any yarn. And I should turn this camera around and show you what's happening behind the scenes. But he ran away. Anyways, so I wasn't able to find any yarn. That's okay. Life is all about improvising, hence the old t-shirt. So I'm just going to cut this up into strips and basically make my own yarn or rope or whatever. So I'm just going to eyeball this and cut it into 11 strips for now and see how I like it from there. Okay, so I brought my mannequin out here to show you what I'm going to do with this. I've um, cut them into strips, I have 11 strips, I'm going to do two sets of twisties on the top, of top and bottom, and then one braided one in the middle of the pattern. 
So I'm just gonna take these three, I'm gonna braid the whole thing. Obviously you can see that I really did just eyeball the width of the strips, but I kind of like it because it gives it more of an, art, an organic look. That legit took like more than three minutes. And I just ended it with a paper clip for now. I mean, not a paper clip, um, a binder clip for now, but we'll glue the ends later. Pretty sure that'll be long enough. It's not perfect, but I'm totally okay with that. And then for the twisties, I'm just literally gonna twist both of these strands. I feel like I could do it at the same time, right? You would think so. And then once they are both twisted, I'm twisting them in the same direction, and then I am going to twist them together in also the same direction. And then I'm kind of continuing to twist the, the individual strands as I'm twisting the main strands, if that makes sense. So this is creating that rope effect or rope, ah, rope look. Okay, so I have my five strands here. As you can see, they're not perfect, but that's okay. I have four of these twisties. I really love the way that they came out. This is free rope, y'all. And then I do have a single braid just for a little bit of different texture. So I am going to keep these four twisties white, and then I'm going to paint this one um, like a baby pink. I made my pink. It is a very, very, very light baby pink, which is what I was going for. I did like a whole sour cream servings worth of the white and maybe like five or six drops of the red. And then I just cut off my braid. I added a little bit of hot glue to the end to secure it. And then the top is not hot glued yet. I have a little binder clip to keep it still and then I just figured I'd continue using this shirt to help me out. So I'm just picking a side that I'm gonna paint and I'm just gonna paint over it. While I'm waiting for the pink braid to dry, I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing these twisties onto my plant. I just picked the side that I decided would be the front. It definitely looks like there's an obvious back to this. And then um, I am just gonna go ahead and add glue to the end of this, just like I did for the braid. I mean, honestly, this twisty should stay together pretty well. But I'm just gonna add glue around the end. It doesn't have to be neat. I mean, it's gonna be hiding along the back anyway. I'm gonna snap this off and then hold it together with my binder clip because I don't want to glue it until I know exactly how long I need it to be. And then I'm just going to go ahead and do two strands of the twisties on the bottom and then the pink braid in the middle and then two more strands of the twisties at the top.
Oh my god, you guys, look at how freaking cute it is already. Just that little pop of white. So cute. I almost want to leave it like this, but I am committed to the color palette of her room, so I definitely want to add that pink in there. So I let the pink braid dry overnight. I was literally doing that project at 3 a.m. this morning. It dried and I glued down the pink braid and this is the final product. I think it's so cute. I was going back and forth between whether or not I wanted to change up the pattern, maybe do like pink, two pink strands and then a white strand in the middle, but I kept it simple and I like that because I really wanted the natural color to shine through because I only have like a little bit of natural color in her room so I kind of wanted it to be very cohesive and be able to pull that in. So that is it for part one of her nursery and DIYs. Again, be sure to subscribe so you can be sure to catch part two of the DIYs that I'm doing for her room that I'm still finishing up. And then of course you can see her full nursery tour. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up and comment below what you thought of my DIYs. I'd love to hear your opinions and share any thoughts or any creative ideas that you've had um, after watching my video or anything similar that you've done. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.